This program is going to explore one of the many centers of the X-rated universe, the adult video and bookstore. And we're going to show it to you like you've never seen it before. And when I say we, it's my pleasure to introduce my handsome co-host. Many of you may know that he's an 18-year veteran of the adult film industry. But most of you should know that he's one of the two major leading men of the 1980s. He's appeared in over 500 feature films, which is a tribute to his <laughs> staying power, as well as a glowing reflection of his perpetual good looks, Eric Edwards. <laughs> Boy, what an introduction. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, what have you been doing lately? Well, I'll still perform as an actor, if the role is right, but lately I've been uh, moving behind the camera, writing, directing, and uh, producing kind of shows that I think America wants to see. One of my productions was Sailing Into Ecstasy, and my latest, and soon to be released, In All the Right Places. Hmm. Speaking of wanting to see, we've got quite a very interesting show planned. So in an attempt to make you feel comfortable in the modern world of X, we've chosen to visit an adult video superstore, The Mustang, and we're going to show you everything you've ever wanted to know about one of these places. And joining us during our show will be our new film critic, the most acknowledged X-rated authority, Mr. Jim Holiday. Also popping up from time to time will be the eternal bad boy of porn, William Margold. And of course, you can always expect the unexpected on MCTV. Right now we're in Upland, California, outside one of the West Coast's largest adult bookstores, The Mustang. And Upland is serviced, so to speak, by MCTV from Riverside. Serviced. I could use a little servicing myself. <laughs> <laughs> and when we come back, we'll be inside. Now, let's watch our first feature film, shall we? I'm ready. This is the area of the Mustang that is never at a loss for customers. The video arcade, or as it's better known, the peep shows. Most video re and rental sales stores don't have peeps. Those little booths populated by virtually 100% male audience where an endless stream of quarters can lead a viewer to gratification beyond his wildest dreams. Let's explore this a little further. Oh, wow. Jeez. I wonder how long it would take to find you here. Hi, kid. <laughs> what you up to? Wow. Well. Oh, no. <laughs> That's what you call violence against women. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet our madcap associate. He's been dubbed the renaissance man of our industry. And he's an actor, an agent, a reviewer for the Hollywood press, and he has written and directed numerous adult productions. There's only one, William Margold. Well, Bill, just what are you up to these days? Oh, out stumping on the uh, gospel of X, I might say. Oh, yes? Preaching the gospel of X, talking about the X-ray industry, and fighting all those people who want to put us out of business. Do you think that women are treated unfairly or are viewed as being degraded and whatnot in, in X-rated films? No, on the contrary. On any X-rated set, you'll see that the women are the ones that are catered to. The men are the ones who have to go off in the corner and get themselves up, quote-unquote. The women are lavished upon, made up, constantly kept cool, kept content, and paid attention to because without them, they are the most important people in our industry. There is no industry. What are these women livers? Uh... You know, well, they're just frustrated these, hags. Most of these women, I was going to say, aren't, aren't particularly attractive. And no, they're not. They're just jealous of people like you and Seika and Serena and Kelly Nichols and the new generations, the Gingers and the Ambers, can have fun, can blow open sexuality and can take the magic carpet ride while they're still sitting home knitting well, uh, or beating, rugs. Their, beating their husbands Beating their brow. rugs, yes. Right. What do these women want to see? I mean, what do they want to see women uh, portrayed as? They want to see women portrayed as baby machines and nothing else. On screen? That's it, nothing else. They want typical pro procreation, and that's it. Sex only to have babies by. That's not the only reason to have it. I hate to break it to America. <laughs> yeah, really. But of course, as I said when I was in Detroit doing a show, as long as America thinks sex is dirty, then there'll be reasons for the X-ray industry in general. Sure. You know, we're the ones who give them their fantasies. We allow America to dream. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with dreaming? Not, not nothing. I never want to wake up. Hey, uh, do you think that uh, the percentage of 9 out of 10 women want to be... I wouldn't want to say They want to be made love to. Well, they, they want to have ravished. a thrill. Yes, ravished. they want to have a thrill in bed. 
Yeah. They want to make bed turn, they want to have the bed turn into a magic carpet, as I say. I keep using the magic carpet ride because I try and make the X-ray industry sort of a playpen for the damned filled with overage juvenile delinquents, and basically all over 18, of course, who are just experimenting in sexuality. And they use our films as levels of experimentation. They see things on film that they can take home and have fun in their own bedrooms, so their own living rooms. it's education. In it's cancer. education, but it's entertainment education. Right. It beats the hell out of the classroom. The bedroom <laughs> is more fun than sitting in a hard wooden desk. I agree. Uh, my pretty boy pal um, is... Um, not yeah. around, but he's probably in one of these booths around here. And uh, listen, why don't we watch another movie right now while... Uh... I'm going back in with my ladies. Okay, I'll look for Eric. You so watch long, another kid. movie. We'll be right back. Come on. Shut up and watch the film. Yes, and Eric and I have split up and we're taking a tour around the store. And this is Mr. Gil Cole who is the mastermind behind this superstore, the Mustang. And uh, you just kind of created this whole thing out of your vivid imagination, or what? Uh, kind yes. of a closet yeah. kinko, huh? <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. um, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions before we went any further. Um, what exactly are the... Uh, you know, like the type of customers, you know, I always like to believe that couples and whatnot are coming into the store, and uh, is this uh, what's going on these days, or...? Well, yes, we do get couples. I mean, is it... Oh, predominantly men, but uh, lots of couples come in. Lots of Occasionally, women. single women come in. Do you or have a shopping carts or anything that you can drive around here? Because I know that No, I we don't have enough room in Niles for shopping carts, but <laughs> I tell you, some people need them. Really? I know. Yeah. Uh, not to mention this other store, but uh, of course, I'll come here all the time from now on. But another store I go to in Hollywood, uh, they, you know, they do have these, like, carts, mm -hmm. and the women are saying, well, you know, do you sure that you have everything, Mildred? Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty commonplace now, mm -hmm. I think. Not commonplace, but it's not like you have to put a paper bag over your head to come in to a store like this. Not at all anymore. Right. Uh, what, with the uh, Mies Commission report, is this um, kind of cut down on business? It doesn't look so today. There's quite a few customers in here. Uh, has it hurt business? No, and I don't believe that it will. No? No. You think that still the uh, people aren't going to let that get it to them? No. And I think if you take something away from people or tell them that they can't have it, they're going to want it more, business will probably even get better. I think so. I think yeah. you're, you're definitely right. You yeah. know, I noticed um, that the doors are off of your, of your peep show booths. What, what's, why? Yes. They just came off yesterday, in fact. The... San Bernardino County, where we're located, council has passed an ordinance saying we must remove those doors. Why? Uh, I don't think Lack they have. Her. I don't think they have a good reason. <laughs> uh, I don't think they've even stated a reason. Uh, maybe health-wise, but of course we know the reason is they think if there are no doors on the booths, then they won't be occupied. We won't have any customers. There's no privacy, in other words. Yeah, there's no privacy. The people won't come here. Uh, this is not true. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, it's not. And, uh, I think, you know, people want this type of a thing, and they're not going to let that bother them. Uh, one last question. The um, superstars of pornography, or erotica, I should say, are who right now? Oh, several of the young ladies are coming on right now. Watch Tasia it. Ray <laughs> is coming on, Ginger Lynn, uh, Tracy Lords, and it goes without saying yourself. <laughs> yep, right. And of course, uh -huh. candy samples, venerable, <laughs> all candy's popular. great. Now, how old mm -hmm. is Candy? Older woman, right? See, guys, she's got a few years on her, but she's still nice. <laughs> well, she's thank very you very nice much. Lady. You got a lovely mm -hmm. store here, and uh, we're gonna check out some of the goodies. Are you ready? Here we go. Good. Let's go. Uh, erotic entertainment establishments have become so consumer conscious that they are placing women in marketing positions. Now, this is Marie. Hi, Hi. Marie. I understand that the, uh, the Mustang's customers are very comfortable with you. Is this true? Uh, yes. At first, they did double takes and triple takes, but then they uh, got to know me, and they were very comfortable, and we'd stand and chat, and we still do. <laughs> uh, they know my name, and I know theirs. Oh, I'll bet. Uh, are they in intimidated at all by a woman? Uh, not the biggest part of them, no. Like I say, uh, I try to put them at ease and uh, make them feel comfortable, make them feel welcome, and we've all gotten along real good. What do they usually want? Well, uh, they come in for quarters. I mean, for besides the, sex. They uh, all yeah. want sex. Uh, they come in for quarters for the arcades. Uh -huh. uh, we have rentals here. 
Uh, they come in and rent the tapes from us. Uh, they inquire about the membership clubs. And, of course, they buy magazines, paperbacks, and the novelties. Do you notice any, any new trends or, or differences in your clientele? Uh, not really. Uh, we have a lot more customers than we had before. Mm -hmm. What about women? Uh, do you see couples coming in every once in a while? Yes. There has been a lot more uh, couples coming in since, uh, well, I can say since I started working here. Well, that's good to hear. It's a nice place that you have here and work in. It's nice conditions, and it's a nice place for couples to come. Back to you, Marilyn. Hello. Hello. What are you hanging up there? Some novelties. Oh, yeah? Like Vibrators what? and dongs and butt little plugs butt plugs. Right down my line, okay. Penis enlargers. <laughs> oh, jeez. Anything to think of. Yeah, anything we can think yes. of. Yes, quite an array. Um, you're Donnie, right? Yeah, I'm Don Cantrell. Hi. Can I ask you some questions? Yes. Do you have some time uh, between the dildos time. and vibrators here? Yeah, okay. I can find uh, some. Yeah, okay. Have you ever had any uh, a star day here at the store? Yes, we do. We have candy samples, John Holmes, can, um, Christine Canyon. Oh, yeah. Did you get a lot of women in here with yeah, John Holmes? Yeah, we got a lot of ladies in here for John Holmes. I'll bet. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, who else? Candy samples, John Holmes. Christine Canyon. I'd love to have you here. You, oh, really? Yes. Oh, Everybody be going, mmm. Okay. Which star caused the biggest riot here? Probably John, huh? John Holmes and Candy Samples. Yeah, Candy something yeah. else. Jay, nice lady. What, uh, what was the most any customer ever spent here? Like how much money? About 750 745 for videotapes. Some videotapes? Of, yeah. No, I might top that on the toys. I don't know, but... Huh? We'll You'd be surprised. Out. Okay, I'd be surprised? No, you might be. <laughs> how many uh, customers a day do you have in here? Oh, give and take, three or four hundred. Really? It's pretty busy. Those arcades, people like to watch movies and buy the toys. Wow. And the books. Three hundred? Jeez, that's a lot. Yeah. We must do pretty well. We do okay. Has the new conservative climate of the country, you know, the, the Mies Commission report and everything, has that hurt business? No, it brings more people in, want to see what's in the stores. Why is that? Why do you think, why do you think people... They want to see what they're trying to ban. What they're missing. Yeah. So basically what they're doing is giving us a lot of uh, advertising Yeah, here. free advertising. All right. Is it true that the uh, X-rated business is recession-proof? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. We sell it when it's down or up. <laughs> right. So it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. And um, what's the, what, what do you think is the most popular toy in here? Well, dolls. Dolls? We sell a lot of dolls here. Oh, my God. Really? Do you have a lot of gay clientele? We have some, some gay people. Some gay people. Yeah, and lesbians. Right. Well, okay. Well, uh, let's take a little walk. Maybe you can show me some more of these vibrators here, and we'll take a walk through the store here. Okay. 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 Oh, we got... This is not vibrated by the pump, the penis enlarger pump. Now it's time to evaluate the latest in erotic entertainment. The reviewer for MCTV is the man who introduced both Eric and myself as charter inductees of the XRCO Hall of Fame. So now it's my turn to introduce him. He's the author of numerous studies on adult films, including his latest bestseller, Only the Best, the Adult Video Almanac. He's forgotten more about X-rated films than any other critics will ever remember. The number one industry expert, Jim Holiday. Welcome. Thank you. And you know, he can't be all that bad because before I ever met him, he called Insatiable one of the ten best films ever made. Do you still think so? Or? More than ever, Marilyn, more than ever since the beginning of uh, the films in 1980. And What about the films of 1980? How are we doing uh, on those? We're going in two different directions, neither one of which uh, pleases most people that I consider to be porn fans. First, we have the big trend toward the crossover, transition, couples kind of film, which is fine in principle, except the only trouble with most of these films in the 80s is that they're losing sight of the cardinal rule of sex films, which is sex. erotic sex. <laughs> Hardcore action. Right. Now, the second trend is, of course, shot on video, directly on video, which I sometimes refer to as shit on video uh, because they're losing the okay. charm that existed in a lot of the films in the pioneer days from throughout the decade of the 70s. Mm -hmm. And the reason I picked Insatiable is because not only are you in it, but most of our viewers have seen it, and it's a good chance for them to get to know me as an erotic reviewer, because 
despite the monkey suit, I'm probably <laughs> closer to the everyday porn viewer than most other critics. I just fell off the turnip truck, folks. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> So, really? <laughs> let's, uh, Insatiable yeah. has everything you want in an adult film. First off, it has the plot and production and the million dollar footage that is nice as a distraction, but it also has the erotic sex that's necessary. And even though there are only five scenes in the film, of those five scenes, they get by so quickly, the 80 minute running time, which is a long film for a, the adult genre, is over before you know it. So that's why that's I like good. that you, movie. You, you want more as opposed to, God, when is this going to be over? Well, it, it, really, I don't care what I see as long as the end result is, are there enthusiastic, energetic, erotic performers. So how many films exactly have you looked at or reviewed? I've seen over 7,000 erotic films. Jeez. When I try and think back, if I can remember one or two scenes <laughs> immediately, you know it's a good film. What films do you have for us today? Well, I picked a couple of different films today, Marilyn, that should cover all types of tastes that our viewers might have. The first film, and they also should be available for our home audience when they see this. The first film is from one of the masters of erotica, Alex Dorenzi, who began in 1970 and in 1986 can still grab America by the groin and show sex <laughs> at its grotesque and still maintain eroticism. And what is that called? It's called Wild Things 2, and I think perhaps they should have called it Wild Blondes, because you start with Joanna Storm, you go to cute little Nikki Charm, you go to Amber Lynn, then you go to the six foot three inch blonde Amazon Chantel, who is paired with a four foot nine inch Oriental Sin Toy, and the two of them, that's the <laughs> grotesqueness of Dorenzi. The two of them help Shanna McCullough celebrate her birthday. Then finally we wind up with John Leslie with uh, the hostess of the film, Carrie Fox, in a comedy scene. Now every one of these particular loops, and it's what we call a loop carrier in the trade, so don't expect fancy plot. But if you're looking for hot, erotic, constant, non-stop sex, I would say go for it. And the scene we've chosen is a unique recreation of the Bonnie and Clyde era. It features superstar Amber Lynn, who, trust me, folks, I've talked to over 100,000 of you over the years. Amber Lynn is your favorite. I know it and you know it. And here she's paired with Dick, 15 and a half, which, uh, you know, advertising in the, in the adult business, mm -hmm. Rambone. But we've got Amber and Rambone in a 30s recreation. Yeah. And now we've got a film for those of you that are more sensitive, shall we say. And I'd like to go on record now, Marilyn, mm -hmm. saying that I'm not a raincoat reviewer. In fact, I was one of the forerunners of the couple's craze. My only beef is that they've kind of lost sight of the sex in giving everybody the plot. Roles, a plot, Rolls Royces, and yachts. Because after all, you don't get off on Rolls Royces and yachts. And now we've got a film that's called She's So Fine, and it was made by probably, arguably, the finest filmmaker of the 80s, Henri Pichard, who brought you Devil and Miss Jones Part Two and Sexcapades. And when Henri is on, he's about the best. Now, he's made hotter films, but this is what I call his warmest film. And I sum it up in three words, which is very cryptic. Wedding for Godot. It's about Tasia Ray on her wedding day waiting for her groom to show up. And if you're familiar with Waiting for Godot, you already know the ending. But you will enjoy the wacky characters that come in out of nowhere and the uh, total confusion that they cause in Tasia Ray and her mother Gloria Leonard's household. And we've got a clip to sort of exemplify some of that wackiness. Let's check it out. And we're back. Now, you had some other uh, films, four other films for us, two, or three other films? Too? Well, I figured since we're in the Mustang bookstore yeah. here in Upland, California, yes. typical of the kind of bookstore that our home viewers could visit any day of the week, we'll show you some of the selections that you can find on the shelves. And it's really easy to come into one of these clean, modern places and grab Taboo American Style. Let's put this on the We'll Take Home list. It there was, we go. It was the voted last year the best film of the year by not only the critics but the adult film association and just about everybody <laughs> now here's a film that i think personally is overrated this is the kind of couples film i'm talking about stiff competition it's a film about oral sex that 
is a little light on the oral sex. But it is sex. cute, though. It's cute. Because it, what, they have a competition for the best head. Well, best head. Right. And we'll take it home and give it to the people next door that want to look at... Well, uh, there's a lot of people who are into... You know, there's a lot of women that ask me, how do you, how do you give proper, you know, head? And, you know, it's hard to kind of just, like, go into a, a dissertation of, you know... Well, you know, where you lay one of the problems of the with this film is that they originally hired Little Oral Annie, and I think if the people want to see instruction on head, check out Little Oral Annie. All right, but, but Stiff Competition's got a lot of good-looking chicks in okay. it and good-looking guys and nice bodies on the cover. Is that one of the guys in the film? Uh, who knows? Oh, that's another thing they do in the 80s that bothers me. A lot of times they put people on the boxes that aren't in the films to uh -oh. lure unsuspecting buyers, so we don't Jeez. need that. Okay. We've got another one here. Totally overrated. Raw talent. Uh, this is another one of these films that has everything under the sun except erotic sex. But it won a lot of awards, and for the those... Slickness? Of Slickness. And for those of you that have seen Raw Talent and agree with me, you know where I'm coming from. If you don't, why fine. That's what uh, horse races are all about. <laughs> one of the uh, most explosive X-rated films you've ever seen. Highest yes. rating. Okay. All right. Let's grab one more. This is a thing called Trinity Brown, made by Robert McCallum, who is a consummate filmmaker. And it's, an, it's got uh, John Leslie in a nice little detective film with Colleen Brennan, who friend of both of ours, very hot lady. And this not only has the detective plot, it manages to transfer some heat on screen. So. Is, the, is the acting pretty good? Or? You know, there's a lot of people that want that. Personally, I'd rather see hot sex, but you know. Uh. I've had a great deal of difficulty since Insatiable. In fact, I think it, I'll pay you later. Th <laughs> no, three films in 1980, Devil and Miss Jones in 83, part two, and Every Woman Has a Fantasy in 84 are about the only films I have seen, with the exception of Dorenzi's hot sex films, but, that really capture the stuff that they had going for them in the 70s. But well, we don't really think that it's necessary, right? Is that we, we agree on that? The plot, I mean, there, there, shouldn't, there should be a beginning, a middle, and an end, and right. the rest filled with All right, well, let's take, a, again, let's use Insatiable as an example. Okay. I don't really consider Insatiable to have a plot. No. It, it's got a premise. But they make the premise work enough so that there's more than enough storyline for those who say there's no story in sex. Right. So. So. Uh, so anyway, this one has ha, does have a plot. Is it in? John Leslie's a pretty good actor. He's a great actor. And <laughs> I don't know why I go that far, but okay, he's a great actor. But it's a, it's a good film for people who want both the sex and the acting and the plot and the, a little bit of romance. It should do the job. Okay. Romance. That's something we'll have to talk about later. Okay. Well, you'll be back with us next time, I hope. And now, let's get ready for our next feature film. We hope that you've enjoyed this up-close look at the modern, safe, secure, clean, and comfortable adult video bookstore. And we hope that you'll consider visiting an establishment like the Mustang real soon. You know, I'd like to thank all the employees here at the Mustang for their terrific hospitality. And Eric, uh, I'd like to thank you too. My pleasure. <laughs> My co-host. I think I'll keep him. Well, good night. Good luck. Good loving. Good sex. <laughs> Most of you should know that he's one of the two major leading men of the 1980s. He's appeared in over 500 feature films, which is a tribute to his <laughs> staying power, as well as a glowing reflection of his perpetual good looks, Eric Edwards. <laughs> Boy, what an introduction. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, what have you been doing lately? Well, I'll still perform as an actor, 
if the role is right, but lately I've been uh, moving behind the camera, writing, directing, and uh, producing kind of shows that I think America wants to see. One of my productions was Sailing Into Ecstasy, and my latest... And of course, you can always expect the unexpected on MCTV. Right now we're in Upland, California, outside one of the West Coast's largest adult bookstores, The Mustang. And Upland is serviced, so to speak, by MCTV from Riverside. Serviced? I could use a little servicing myself. <laughs> <laughs> and when we come back, we'll be inside. Now, let's watch our first feature film, shall we? I'm ready. This is the area of the Mustang that is never at a loss for customers. The video arcade, or as it's... This program is going to explore one of the many centers of the X-rated universe, the adult video and bookstore. And we're going to show it to you like you've never seen it before. And when I say we, it's my pleasure to introduce my handsome co-host. Many of you may know that he's an 18-year veteran of the adult film industry. But most... And soon to be released in all the right places. Hmm. Speaking of wanting to see, we've got quite a very interesting show planned. So in an attempt to make you feel comfortable in the modern world of X... We've chosen to visit an adult video superstore, the Mustang, and we're going to show you everything you've ever wanted to know about one of these places. And joining us during our show will be our new film critic, the most acknowledged X-rated authority, Mr. Jim Holiday. Also popping up from time to time will be the eternal bad boy of porn, William Margold. 